Well, a warm welcome to this talk, Wednesday the 10th of January. Now, I know vaccine programmes for COVID are being run down around the world and uptake is uh, quite a lot lower. In fact, in the UK, we're not administering the programme now. The booster programme's actually uh, finished in December. But I think it's really important that we learn lessons from the mistakes that have been made, especially as we've got huge plants around the world developing new mRNA vaccines. We really need to learn the mistakes of history, or I'm afraid we are destined to repeat them, which is quite a frightening prospect. Now, I'm going to just talk about this uh, mostly today. This is uh, Joseph uh, uh, Ladipo, the Surgeon uh, General of Florida as we see a uh, research doctor. Now, he's recently uh, said this, I'm calling for a halt to the use of mRNA COVID vaccines. The US Food and Drug Administration and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have always played it fast and loose with COVID-19 vaccine safety, but they're fairly to test DNA integration with the human genome as their own guidelines dictate when the vaccines are known to be contaminated with foreign DNA is intolerable. So the Surgeon General here is saying that we has now been well recognised that there's DNA contamination in the RNA vaccines. In other words, it's supposed to be a ribonucleic acid vaccine, but it contains deoxyribonucleic acid as well. And of course, the fear is that this can get into the genome of individual cells. The Guide, the uh, CDC's own guidelines say that this should be accounted for, but the Surgeon General here is uh, unhappy with the degree to which that has been done, and I share his concerns, obviously. So calling for a halt to the mRNA vaccines. As always, Florida will put scientific integrity and the safety of our citizens above profit fueled agendas. Now, OK, some of a political statement, but I think we all relate to this. There's a feeling around the world that money's been made inappropriately in some situations and a lot of people are very uncomfortable with that and obviously if I'd known there was DNA in these vaccines I would never have had them we really weren't told the full story at the time in fact um, it wasn't even allowed to say um, in many media outlets social media outlets that there was DNA contamination in vaccines till quite recently so um, it's only recently they're actually allowed to discuss this um, now, this is his letter from the 10th of May 2023, um, talking to the uh, it's the FDA and the CDC, I think. Um, yeah, CDC and any, any you, you, yeah, USA, Food and Drug Administration. Um, he says this, your ongoing decision to ignore many of the risks associated with mRNA vaccines alongside your effort to manipulate the public into thinking they are harmless have resulted in deep distrust in American healthcare systems. This is one of the main things. People are distrusting healthcare systems. Most of healthcare is good. Virtually all doctors and nurses are trying their best. But there's a distrust, which is the problem now, and especially a distrust in the research and the knowledge base. Um, so this letter is based back from um, uh, the last uh, May. Nonetheless, two years after your collective decision to deny that natural immunity confers comparable or superior protection to COVID-19 vaccination, push mRNA COVID-19 boosters for the young and healthy and delay acknowledging the risks of vaccine-induced myocarditis have only sowed doubts between the American people and the uh, public. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll put the links there. You can read that for yourself. Um he makes some pretty valid points, actually. Now, he's got a lot of bad press lately, but the points he's making here are actually, are actually pretty good. Um, so doubts between the American public and the health community is what he says. Now, um, the letter goes on. Uh, data are unequivocal after COVID-19 vaccine rollout. The Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System reported increasing by 17 times, 1,700%, including a 4,400%. That's, I guess that's a 44 times rise increase in life-threatening conditions. Uh, we are not the first to observe such a trend, and of course we believe that adverse events are greatly underreported. So let's look at what he's been saying here. This is These are the releases, so as always I've put all the references on so you can check I'm not making this up. Now, the other letter is from the 6th of December, the most recent letter, before those tweets. 
Um, the Surgeon General outlined concerns regarding nucleic acid contamination, particularly DNA contamination, which we didn't think was there and couldn't say was there for a long time. Pfizer and Moderna, COVID mRNA vaccines. Now, lipid nanoparticles may therefore be an equally efficient vehicle for uh, delivering contaminated DNA to human cells. What he's saying here is these lipid nanoparticles in the vaccine are very good um, at taking the RNA into cells. Unfortunately, they take them into cells all around the body, which they weren't supposed to do. If the lipid nanoparticles are so good at spreading around the body and carrying nucleic acid with them, with them then it stands to reason they're going to be carrying the DNA as well. Perfectly legitimate uh, scientific point. And the presence of the uh, SV40 promoter enhancer, this is the simian virus uh, promoter, uh, enhances DNA, may also pose a unique risk and heightened risk of DNA integration into the human cell. So this F SV40, um, it's, now uh, my understanding here is um, it's used in the manufacturing process to increase the transcription rate. So the DNA you have gives you more RNA. But if that's left in the vaccine, it, well, it shouldn't be left in the vaccine. And uh, there's a risk that that could affect some genes, as we'll see in a minute. Now, he does point out correctly that 2007, uh, the FDA published guidelines on regulatory limits for DNA vaccines. So they've got their own guidelines here. Um, and really, we have to ask the question, have these guidelines been rigorously uh, followed? Now, these are the guidelines for industry. That they set out in this guideline for industry, the FDA outlines important considerations for vaccines that use novel methods of delivery regarding DNA integration, which, of course, is what we don't want. Um, DNA integration could theoretically impact uh, humans' oncogenes. Um, an oncogene is a gene which is capable of causing, starting a cancer. Now, he's not saying these vaccines, of course, cancer, although we have seen a, a concern expressed by people such as Professor Dalgleish. So he's not saying that. A lot of fact checkers have jumped onto this and um, and, and say that, that people have been claiming that these are causing cancers. They're not. This is a possibility that the Surgeon General has raised. And if you read his letter, it's actually very balanced and very fair. DNA integration may result in chromosomal instability. So that's not me saying that. That's from the uh, FDA guidelines from 2007. And uh, the guidance for industry... Uh, discusses biodistribution of DNA vaccines and about the integration of that. But the point is, what they point out here, so how such integration could affect unintended parts of the body. And we know that these vaccines go everywhere now. So blood, heart, I'm afraid we know about heart complications, don't we? Brain, liver, kidney, bone marrow, ovaries and testes, quite concerningly. Lung, drainage, lymph node, spleen, sites of administration. So this risk was known way back in 2007. And they say it's essential to human health to assess the risk of contamination, contaminating DNA integrating into the human genome. That's the FDA's own guidelines. Back to uh, Dr. Ladapo's statement. Um, the FDA has provided no evidence that these risks have been uh, assessed to ensure safety. So we would like evidence of that. At the moment, we don't doesn't have it. As such, the Florida State Surgeon General, Dr. Derek Joseph A. Ladapo, has released the following statement. The FDA's response does not provide data or evidence that the DNA integration assessments they recommended themselves have been performed. So has this been done? <laughs> no evidence, he says. DNA integration poses unique and elevated risk to human health. Uh and to the integrity of the human genome, including the risk of DNA integration into sperm or egg or gametes, it's the reproductive cells, could pass to offspring of mRNA COVID vaccine recipients. We need evidence that this is not occurring, and it can be tested for. If the risk of DNA integration have not been assessed for mRNA COVID vaccines, these vaccines are not appropriate for use in human beings. It is my hope that in regard to COVID-19, the FDA will one day seriously consider its regulatory responsibilities to protect human health, including the integrity of the human genome, which I think we've all got a bit of a vested interest in. So given that, it's not surprising that he has said uh, this 
uh, on the 3rd of January, calling for a halt to the use of COVID vaccines. Now, is there any scientific rationale for what it's so he's saying that things haven't been done which is correct but is anything any evidence that these things could be going wrong yes there is so for example we take this preprint here now yes i know you're going to say it's a preprint but it's actually quite difficult to get certain types of material into the peer-reviewed literature at the moment this is part of the whole epistemological problem that we've been talking about there is a publication bias where certain material is likely to be published often well-funded material uh, and there's other situations where other material is less likely to be published uh, but this is actually a fairly convincing piece of research do check it out for yourself dna fragments detected in monovalent and bivalent pfizer BioNTech, and moderna uh, covid vaccines this is from ontario canada uh, and, and what they do here, the uh, exploratory dose response relationship with serious adverse events, which is interesting. Do check it out. This is all reputable scientists. That is the link there. Download it for yourself. Quite a fairly hard paper to read, actually. Quite a lot of scientific detail, which, of course, is good. But the, the introduction is, is really quite straightforward. You can read that for yourself if you want more information. Uh, and anyway, they say this. These data demonstrate the presence of billions to hundreds of billions of DNA molecules per dose in these vaccines. Using this uh, assessment method, um, all, vaccines, all vaccines exceeded the guidelines for the residual DNA set by the FDA and World Health Organization of 10 nanogram doses. Uh, so they exceeded it by 188 times to 509, 509 times. Um, that's the claim made in this paper using their uh, assay methods. Um, they say uh, in an exploratory analysis we found preliminary evidence of a dose response relationship um, so that could be the case uh, relationship to the amount of DNA per dose and the frequency of serious adverse events now of course the serious adverse events concern me as a healthcare provider a lifelong healthcare provider greatly um, but some things have a delayed effect so for example Someone could start smoking when they're a teenager and not get lung cancer till they're in the 50s or 60s. Um, people that are exposed to asbestos might not get the mesothelioma in the lung malignancy for 30, 40 years after uh, their, their exposure. There can be a long delay. And what we don't know, of course, is what's going to happen in the next year uh, 10 years, 20 years, whatever it is. We know about the immediate adverse events, but we don't know about the long-term ones. Our findings extend existing concerns over vaccine safety and call into question the relevance of guidelines conceived before the introduction of efficient trans transfection using uh, lipid nanoparticles. So the transfection is the RNA and potentially the DNA going into the cells, and we know they get all over the body because of the lipid nanoparticles. Now, the World Council for Health had flagged this up uh, way last year. Uh, bacteria DNA has been found in mRNA vaccines. A cancer-promoting genetic sequence, SV40, has been found in the COVID vaccines as well. Now, Surgeon General in Florida does not mention uh, cancer-promoting. This is from the World Council of Health. Assess that evidence for yourself. Of course, I put the links there. Uh, this was not present in the vials used. Uh, this was not present in the vials used for approved studies but has been found in all vials of BioNTech, vials disseminated for public use. Now, um, is that true? Well, we've got a couple of references here. And, of course, on this programme, we talked to uh, Joseph uh, Getzko um, from uh, Hebrew University. Uh, he said this, and this, this, this is on the reference I've given you, but we also discuss this on the video. Pfizer performed a classic uh, bait and switch. The first ones were made with uh, PCR. This is the vaccines used in the trial were mostly made from PCR, which basically just replicates any DNA sequence that you give it. Um, fine, that was used in the trial. Now, there was a small amount from memory from talking to uh, Joshua, uh, Joshua Getzko. Um, there was a small amount of... Um, the actual what he calls process 2 vaccine used from the DNA template in the trial, but not much. It was only introduced towards the end. 
So most of it was this uh, PCR-derived pure uh, RNA. Um, whereas process 2 used E. coli, the bacteria. E. coli, coli normally found in the colon. Um, it's generally not good for us, the E. coli. They cut it up, they laid it out, and then they made uh, mRNA with it. So they were using the DNA template from the E. coli to make the RNA that went into the vaccine, but they weren't clearing out uh, sufficiently, according to this. Uh, so Joshua Getsko says this. Um, then, uh, yeah, they, 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 then they had to clean all of that stuff out. So that's the DNA contamination out of the brew. Not only did they not good, do a good job, but it's really unclear how well they would be able to get it out if they really tried. So perhaps an intrinsic fault with the manufacturing process there that should be addressed. And of course, um, we did talk to Joseph uh, uh, Fre Freeman as well on, on this channel about his paper, Serious Adverse Events of Special Interest Following mRNA COVID Vaccination, looking back at the original trial data. And he found Pfizer vaccines, excess risk of serious adverse events, uh, 10 per 10,000 transposes into one serious adver adverse events per 990 vaccines. But he did find more in the Pfizer, uh, sorry, m m more in the Moderna, 15.1 uh, per 10,000 that transposes into one serious adverse event per 662 vaccinations. So um, real reasons really to consider uh, what uh, Dr. Ladapo has uh, has said there quite concerning really if we look at the uk's latest uh, data we find that in the target group for the um for the boosters 68.8 percent of the population that could have had it uh, have in fact uh, had it so uh still quite wide distribution um we know about the short-term adverse events Let, let's hope there are no uh, long-term adverse events my concern about this is mostly because people like um, um, Angus Dalgleish Professor Dalgleish are concerned about this um, the evidence for it for causing cancer we don't think is there now it is a concern we need more information on it and a big part of the problem is we we, we kind of got used to uh, uh, not being given the full information now so people are a bit suspicious. So we could do with reassurance that there is no uh, oncogenic effect from COVID vaccines. That would be good. Um, preferably from the regulatory authorities who would need to address this issue, do some research on it, and then keep us informed about it. Now, this certainly, certainly needs to be done before we get more mRNA vaccines as are being produced in plants being built now we think in oxford canada um australia quite a few countries in the world there's this big shift towards the mrna technology and yet there are these fundamental questions still associated with it um we'll leave that there uh, interesting questions let's hope for some pretty good answers pretty soon thank you for watching